uh, noble lords, that I'm not going to, uh, apart from this one, um, say very much on any of the others. But I do think this is an important one, um, Amendment 4, because it's actually bringing in a new concept um, in relation to its insertion into legislation uh, 78F, because it's going to require public authorities to have due regard to uh, a requirement to strive for promoting parity of esteem. Now, for most uh, noble lords, parity of esteem will seem, well, that sounds wonderful and superficially very, very attractive. Uh, but in substance, I believe it's quite dangerous. Um, this concept of parity of esteem has long been a key part of uh, the Republican agenda, used as it is to cloak uh, nationalist political demands in the language of individual rights. And I'm going to quote from something that Jerry Adams said in 1998, and I know that uh, there will be some members here, probably the minister himself, who will say, well, for goodness sake, that was 1998, that was a long time ago. But I think anyone who knows what's going on in Northern Ireland knows that what Jerry Adams said in 1998, he would still be saying today, and other people are saying it. And I quote his words, specifically as part of the total restructuring of relationships, one of the difficult issues to be tackled is that of cultural symbols and of flags and emblems. The institutional and official ethos of the northern state is British. This has to change. We must ensure that there is parity of esteem and a just and equal treatment for the identity, ethos and aspirations of all our people. This cannot be simply an illusion. It must be the reality. The responsibility for this change rests primarily with the British government. And he continued, in practical terms, where British national or cultural symbols are displayed on public buildings or in working environments, equal prominence should be given to Irish national or cultural symbols as an immediate expression of parity of esteem. And this includes working environments associated with the exercise of public authority, council offices, courts, police service sites, civil service office and quangos. And I think it's important, noble lords, that the, carefully these words are looked at because it's not equal treatment for all persons that is sought. And let me be clear, everybody accepts that all citizens must be treated equally regardless of any personal characteristics or political aspiration. But it is the identity and ethos of all people that Sinn Féin demand must have equal prominence. And put simply, they do not seek equal treatment for all individuals. That's very different altogether. They seek that their nationalist ideas and aspirations receive parity. It's not about parity for the messenger, but rather parity for the message. And the reality is that this is about diluting all sovereign expressions of British identity. Diluting all sovereign expressions of British identity. By developing a concept that requires Irish national symbols must be given equal public prominence. And that's entirely inconsistent with the principle of consent, which mandates that Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom until the majority vote otherwise. And the Sinn Féin version of parity of esteem would require the primacy of the national identity be diluted, turning Northern Ireland in terms of its symbolic identity into a hybrid British-Irish state. And yet, here we have this section, 78F, that transports this Sinn Féin contrived parity of esteem concept into Northern Ireland's constitutional status, notwithstanding its complete inconsistency with the principle of consent enshrined in Section 1 of the 1998 Act. And in requiring due regard to this uh, concept, what will this open the door to? Well, we just read Gerry Adams' article. It will mean a demand for the Irish flag to fly alongside anywhere the Union flag is flying. It will mean that a picture of the Queen will have to be balanced with somebody from some Republican figure, maybe Michael Collins, I don't know, and it could go on and on. And of course, the Northern Ireland Office, of all public bodies, should see the dangers of this and the potential for constant litigation trying to push the boundaries. Already, the Northern Ireland Office have I, in my view, quite despicably paid out compensation to an individual who was offended by seeing the Queen on the wall in the workplace. Think about it. 
an employer of Her Majesty's Government being paid thousands of pounds because in the Northern Ireland office, yes, Northern Ireland, part of the United Kingdom, he is offended by a portrait of Her Majesty the Queen. And yet here we have this bill, which far from closing off such future absurdities, actually opens the door and effectively invites even more such constitutionally humiliating and ridiculous legal cases and efforts to chip away, drip, 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 at every expression of British identity. Parliament should not entertain such nonsense, and so my amendment seeks to ensure no public authority is required to treat any national flag or expression of sovereign identity in parity with our own national symbols and identity. All people must be treated equally and be equally entitled to pursue their legitimate political aspirations peacefully and lawfully. But there is no requirement that the United Kingdom should dilute the primacy of our national identity in pursuit of this parity of steam consent concept, which has long been weaponised as part of the so-called Republican struggle. This would not be allowed to happen anywhere else in the United Kingdom. And in addition, finally, this amendment would, of course, close off any more absurd litigation trying to push the boundaries, costing the state millions of pounds overall.